Oh, Oof, my little tool will never be the same again. Look at that spot. <laughs> Hello, GCSE Physics Explained. I'm going to explain how to use the Van de Graaff generator. Basically the whole thing is to do with friction. If you get two insulators, so there's a rubber band there which is an insulator and there is a plastic roller at the bottom which is an insulator. When one thing rubs against another thing, electrons get transferred. The electrons are going to get transferred onto this metal dome and they've got nowhere else to go. As you'll notice these supports here are plastic. So the electrons are just going to build up and build up on top of here. But when there's enough electrons, there'll be enough voltage and it, you should be able to see the electrons jumping from this dome across onto that dome and we'll see a spark. Right, so I'll turn this bad boy on. Whoa! Look at that. So this is how lightning happens. With lightning, you get hot air rising, cold air falling, and the friction of one air against another air causes electrons to be transferred. And there's enough electrons, it can jump from the clouds down to the earth. And that's your lightning strike, so it's a discharge of electrons from the clouds. Now, I'll let that charge build up. That ball there, it's got a coating of graphite on it which allows electricity to build up on it. So now the dome is negative and the ball's negative. Opposites attract, but like charges repel. So negative does not want to be next to another negative. If I touch it, I'll discharge it, and it'll go back. Look at these balls. <coughs> Every little ball gets the same charge and they don't want to be next to each other. How do you turn static electricity into current electricity? You let it flow. As the electrons are flowing through this tube, it's fluorescent and the tubes lighten up. I've turned it from static electricity into current electricity. If I stand on here, if I touch this, woof, my hair was already standing on end, see it standing on end. All the electrons are going through my arm, going up into my hair, woof, see that? My hairs all become electrically charged and my hairs repelling away from each other. Oof, look at that. My little tool will never be the same again. So that's me getting discharged. Oof. Hello. So, static electricity. When two different insulating materials are rubbed together, they become electrically charged. Well, that's because of friction. Negative charges, electrons, rub off one material onto the other. The material which gains the negative charges becomes negatively charged, and the material which loses the negative charges becomes positively charged. That's very, very important that you understand that. So the seven missing words, I'll pop them along the bottom. Okay, have a little look at that. Pause the video, see if you can get them out. Okay, so static electricity is caused when two insulating materials are rubbed together. Friction causes some negative charges, electrons, to be transferred from one material on, onto the other. The material which gains negative charges becomes negatively charged and the material which loses negative charges gets left positive. This is the key to the kingdom. Einstein was dyslexic. You do not need to be able to write and read incredibly well to be a good scientist. What you do need is a good imagination. Science is brought to life these days by animation such as what the Footprints is doing because this allows you to see what's happening. So when two materials are rubbed, this is what's happening. You can see the negative charges are the green ones, the positive charges are the red ones. Friction is giving the electrons, the green charges, enough energy to be able to jump from one material onto the other. Both materials started out with zero charge because the number of positive and negative charges that each of them had was balanced. However, the friction has disrupted that balance. You can see here that electrons have jumped from the rod onto the cloth. So the cloth has gained electrons, negative charges, so it's become negative, and the rod has lost negative electrons so that's got left positive. It's fair to think, if you say it to someone, how come this rod's positive? And then they'll think, oh, well, it must have gained protons because protons are positive. Protons can't move. They are tucked away inside the nucleus of the atom, okay? When you look at the structure of an atom, it is the electrons that are on the outside. And when you're rubbing 
the material, you're rubbing the atoms, and that is rubbing the electrons and exciting the electrons, giving the electrons enough energy to be able to transfer. Now electrically charged objects can attract small objects. Two positively charged objects will repel. Two negatively charged objects will also repel. A positively charged object and a negatively charged object will attract. So that's opposites attract and like charges repel. Again, here we go. Five missing words. Have a go at that. Okay, did you pause the video? Have you had a go? So electrically charged objects can attract small objects. Two negatively charged objects will repel. Two positively charged objects will repel. A positively charged object and a negatively charged object will attract. For two marks in an exam, we'll see what will happen here. They will repel for one mark and they will move away from each other because they've got the same charge. For two marks in an exam, don't just say they will repel, you say they will repel and they will move away from each other. And these, again, if it's for two marks, don't just say they'll attract, say they will attract and they will move closer to each other. Uses and dangers of static electricity. You've got to be able to tell the examiner what you can use static electricity for. So static electricity can be used in photocopiers, smoke precipitators and spray painting. A charged object can be discharged by connecting it to earth with a conductor. And static electricity can be dangerous, like lightning. It's getting dangerous. How's that? It's yeah. getting good. This pole right here. If the voltage becomes too great, the negative charges can jump a gap causing a spark. This spark could ignite flammable liquid nearby. So this is the electrostatic precipitator. Basically what you're going to see is some smoke particles coming up through here. Now as the smoke particles come up through the grid, that's a positively charged grid so the smoke particles become positive. Now as they move further up the chimney, you can see these two plates here are negatively charged. So positively charged small particles are going to get attracted toward the negative plates. And that stops the smoke from coming out the top and potentially polluting the environment with harmful gases. The harmful gases could be sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxides. And then a hammer would just uh, strike these and the soot would fall to the bottom of the chimney. Remember, as one thing rubs against another thing it causes friction and friction can cause electrons to be transferred. If enough electrons can be transferred it could be a spark. That might be a good jump. That always makes my class jump. Usually what I do is turn the volume right up. <laughs> so let's have a go at this. Seven missing words. There we go. Pause the video and have a go. Static electricity can be dangerous. If the voltage becomes too great, the negative charges can jump a gap, causing a spark. This spark could ignite a flammable liquid nearby. That's a very common question to be asked that in, an, in your exam. I'll tell you about how electrostatic paint spraying works. You know, this is electrostatic paint spraying, so this is how to use electrostatics to spray a car door or anything like that really. Or sometimes we use these to spray crops. It's slightly different for spraying crops, mate. So first thing, charge the paint spraying nozzle positive, and then when the paint comes out of the paint spraying nozzle, all of the paint will be positive. The paint droplets are gonna repel each other then, and that'll produce like a fine mist which creates an even coat of paint. Tell the examiner that that would be an advantage so you don't get streaky paint. And the last thing is to charge the card door negative and then the positive paint will be attracted so you'll waste less paint. And that is another advantage. 
What does it look like in terms of a picture? Looks like this. So here's your paint sprayer, get a big car battery and charge that positive by hooking it up with a positive electrode. The gun is positive, when the paint comes out of the positive nozzle, all the paint droplets will be positive. They'll spread apart nicely, forming a mist, and the car door is negatively charged, so this will get attracted to the car door, and you waste less paint. Now if you're painting a bike, you're hanging a bike or something like that, the bike tubes are very thin, so with this technique, any paint that misses this side of the bike can sometimes come round and get attracted to the back side of the bike, so you can actually paint all of the bike all at the same time. With crop spraying, what would happen is you charge the droplets, either positive or negative, just so you charge the droplets positive the crops that you're spraying would not have a charge but when the positive charge comes close to it that would induce a negative charge in the crops and it would be attracted that way you can do it the other way around you can charge this negative and you can charge that positive not a problem and that's how to take care of business with that thank you very much well, the only other thing i really do is get kids to all line up together and the last person touches something and we all get a spore. We all get a spore.